I'm not brand safe, but you should be. <laughs> hey, welcome back to Thinking Out Loud. I'm Joel. And I'm Eric. So today we are we are close on the heels of a little scandal of sorts that broke. Another. Um, Another scandal of sorts. series of unfortunate <laughs> events. So, um, what scandal, you ask? Well, I shall tell you. It is, of course, uh, very large advertisers of the AT&T, Disney, Nestle sort. Um, Epic that have, Games. That's Epic favorite. Games that have once again pulled all their advertising from YouTube pre-roll. Why did they do it this time? Look, uh, this has been an ongoing thing. In 2017, they, YouTube was having a problem of not being able to correctly pair um, pre-roll with safe content that mm. is, you know, going against uh, politically charged, dare I say, like, very bad no, it was content. It terrorist stuff. I know, very was... bad. This is even worse and harder for YouTube to control because on the face of it, it's against... It's running advertising pre-roll against very nice, very clean children's content. Yeah. But some some really messed up people out there are doing, like, inserting inappropriate things in the middle of what is ostensibly safe content for kids. And all these companies are saying, until Google and YouTube can guarantee that our advertising is not going to be against anything that is going to violate our brand standard, we're pulling it all. Right. Okay. So, yeah. A year ago, it was jihadi content, terrorist content. This time, it's uh, it's even pedophilia. Yeah. And it's and in the comments and, and yeah, and it's a mess. And it's something that they don't. So, all right. How how did we get? How did AT and T? How did Nestle? How did Epic Games get here? I've got an answer. Well, um, well, tell me your answer. Okay. I bet my, you and I. Agree. My answer is. AT&T, your media buyers are lazy. My answer, exactly. They're Nestle. Trying, they're trying to do the same thing that they used to do. Your media buyers are lazy. Your media buyers are lazy. Just in case you didn't catch that, your media buyers <laughs> are lazy. <laughs> they're trying to do it the old way. They're trying to do pro programmatic buys, doing a single deal like they would do with TV yeah. buys, and yeah. spread millions of dollars in a single deal. And that is not... That is not the kind of effective, safe advertising that you're going to do on a platform like YouTube. Right. It's got to be much more curated, much more, much more carefully sifted. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. You can't, you cannot take your TV model, apply it to online video, and say this is going to be fine. Why? Let me, let me throw some facts at you, Internet. How <laughs> many, <laughs> how many hours of YouTube content are uploaded every single minute? A hundred. 300 hours. That is 27,000 hours of content every hour. There is no entity on the planet, be it human or AI, that is going to effectively be able to determine the brand safety content of no. 300 hours every single minute. There are 5 billion videos watched on YouTube every single day. Man. You're not going to know where your ads are running unless you pay attention and don't let your media buyers be lazy. He's yelling at you. I am yelling, yelling at, at you because it's amazing that at and is like, oh, how does this happen? <laughs> and it's like, are you kidding me? This is the most predictable thing in the world. So listen. Hold on, hold on. Okay. This doesn't mean that YouTube is just ultimately Preach. unsafe no matter what. Speak to that. There is a, dare I say, a different approach to advertising on YouTube that is curated, that that is 99.9% brand safe. Right. So what is it? Talk to it. Every, every host that we work with, every show that we run an integration on, on behalf of our clients, on behalf of CMOs and all these different brands who want to tap into this audience, to tap into this platform, we're previewing the, the spot before it goes live. We're... We are, before they're even proposed, we are looking 
giving a hard look at that content. We know them! Yeah. We know them. We are friends with them. We know this whole world of creators. That, and, and, this is, and this isn't just us. This is going to be any influencer company is going to do a really good job of saying, no, these are known commodities. We know that they're safe. And do this natively, get the endorsement. But if you're gonna if you're gonna be an online video, be in online video. Because it's it's gonna it, it is it is a safe way to do it. You front run so many issues by just working with creators that are known commodities instead of your 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 lazy ass shotgun approach that we're just gonna go in front of whatever the hell video is about to run. But even I need to take it one step further because even if I don't have a personal relationship with the channel, because I'm always meeting new channels, we're always we're sure. always out meeting and contacting and and conversing with new channels. We're looking at all of their content. Right. So right. I, no, I'm not best friends with them all, but oh, if I'm right, going to go right. find I'm going to go find the right channel or the right the right show or the right host for the opportunity that that any of these brands are are looking for with this creative campaign and and there is a there is an essence of brand safety but yeah if you're going to be doing this do it in a way that is appropriate for the platform don't think you can just apply this formula and overlay it yeah. here and expect the same result yep and yep. stop being lazy yeah stop being lazy okay that's it for us. Um, Kate wants you to follow us all on social media. I um, want you to follow us all on social but, media. I do. But mostly Kate. Oh, you're right. I'm afraid. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Uh, we will see you next time.